Did you know that fish breathe air? to fish for thought. Actually, I really hope that doesn't catch on. Uh, I've seen it in the comment section like a few times, but I guess I'm digging myself a hole here. Anyways, five myths. Myth number one, cycling your tank with nothing. New beginners, myself included, when I was getting into the hobby, I thought that, you know, you leave the filter on and then you fill up the tank and you let it cycle, cycle, and then the water comes into the filter, goes into the tank, wait like a week and then you're good. That's a complete myth, especially if you're not using any sort of material like from another tank. Like there's no filter material from another tank, no substrate that was used, no plants, no nothing. Uh, how are you able to start the cycle? You have to introduce beneficial bacteria or waste some way or another. Then the cycle actually doesn't start until you put the fish in, which is not what we want, right? If we want fishless cycle, we need to introduce something. Obviously, if you're new to this and you don't know this, that means you don't have a fish tank up yet. But if you did, you could take some of the filter material or some rocks or substrate from that existing tank into your new tank, kickstart the cycle that way. If not, I suggest actually buying some beneficial bacteria. They don't cost much at all. You can also put some fish flakes. Myth number two, very closely related. It's about dechlorinating your water. Some people think that you can just get fresh water from you know, your sink and then into a bucket, leave that bucket out overnight or for even a week or so, and then all the chlorine is gone. Well, they're not wrong. All the chlorine can dissipate like that. However, there's two problems. The first minor problem, water temperature. Once you leave it out in room temperature, I don't know about your house, but my house gets a little cold sometimes. And when you're ready and you think the water's dechlorinated, you pour it into your heated fish tank, that like difference in temperature is gonna shock your fish. Second most challenging problem with this is that most cities now run their tap water with chloramines. Now chloramines is not like chlorine. They stick and bond to the water molecules much tighter and they don't really dissipate even if you leave out the water. Not to mention there's always heavy metals around and the good types of dechlorinators gets rid of heavy metals and chloramines along with chlorine. So it's always better to spend that extra few bucks to get a proper dechlorinator so that your fish don't suffer from heavy metal poisoning or chloramine poisoning. Third myth is that your fish has really short memory, especially goldfish. People are usually talking about goldfish when they talk about this, but then also extends to other types of fish. They only have like five seconds or three seconds of memory. Now, if you think back, whether it be a goldfish or some tropical fish, when you first purchase that fish and then you tried to feed it, it probably didn't really know where the food is, right? Or it was very slow to go up to the surface to get food. Now they're scared for one, and they actually aren't aware that food is coming whenever it's coming. Fast forward about a month or two months into your new fish's home. Now these fish are like rushing to the top when they see you enter the room, even before you put food on the surface. They know exactly what you're gonna do and they know where you're gonna put the food. Now that is some good long-term memory. So they can memorize things and bettas and other fish can do a lot of nice tricks. Even goldfish can do tricks. I mean, there's a little bit of truth to it. Whenever I see my fish like eating the same piece of poop, thinking it's like a food particle over and over again for like three times, that's when I'm like, bro, you have like memory issues. Myth number four is that tropical fish are harder to keep than goldfish. This is completely untrue. Just because goldfish can tolerate cooler temperatures and may not always need a heater does not make them especially hardy. Tropical fish such as black skirt tetra or the harlequin raspora are much tougher than goldfish and do not really need big tanks that goldfish do need. These tropical freshwater fish are way easier to keep, they have lower maintenance and are much hardier. This is such a prevalent myth that it gets pretty annoying. Please help spread the awareness. Maybe tonight at the dinner table you can say, hey guys, did you know that goldfish can actually be much harder to keep than tropical fish? I'd appreciate that a lot. Myth number five, freshwater is cheaper than saltwater tanks. Actually, this myth is true. However, this true thing kind of gets mythy when people think, oh, freshwater is much cheaper than saltwater. It's really cheap. I can totally afford it with like a $50 budget 
you know, from my experience and telling people to play it safe, I generally tell people to budget out $300 if they don't have a fish tank. Now this $300 is a tank that's smaller, a nano tank to maybe a 10 gallon. If you're going bigger, you want a bigger contingency for your budget. I'm not saying you're gonna spend all of that money. I'm just saying it's important to have contingency. Especially if it's your first time, things are going to go wrong. And you might want to play it safe by getting new equipment instead of scouring the Craigslist. There's also just equipment that you can't get from a Craigslist. I mean, let's break it down. Best case scenario stuff. Fish tank, 10 gallon for like 10 bucks, okay? That's great. Now heater and filter. Um, you can get that maybe like 30 bucks, 25 bucks. So that's 35 bucks right there. Now LEDs or proper lighting, that's gonna be hard to find on a site like Craigslist. So you might wanna go somewhere else for that. Get a proper one that'll grow live plants. Cause you know, I'm always thinking about doing things the proper way instead of the bare minimum way. It's kind of, you know, our responsibility. This is a life, you know? You, you, you can do the bare minimum, but the chances keep lowering as you take out something they might need, like a heater. Then their survival chances go lower and lower. I've seen people keep goldfish in a bowl for years, but that's lucky. You don't wanna play with luck like that. Like if you go on an airplane, do you wanna make sure that, you know, that airplane line actually checks and does maintenance and also uh, have people double check on how much fuel there is, double check on the weather, there's not gonna be any surprise thunderstorms. You're getting on this plane and putting your life at risk. I know a lot of people can't translate that to their pets, but I think they should. It's very irresponsible to do that. Especially the parents who are putting a goldfish in a bowl just because their kids want a goldfish and then they get tired of the goldfish and the goldfish dies in two weeks. They're supposed to live for like years, man, like 10 to 15 years. Like what are you doing teaching your kids irresponsible things like that? You're basically raising baby Hitler. Anyways, I digress. So yes, salt water is more expensive than freshwater tanks, but don't take freshwater lightly either. Don't try to get the budget and the minimum for every single aspect of this hobby. And generally try to be more prepared. Prevention is always better than damage control. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and there'll be more videos to come. Don't forget to get your hands wet.